What do you, uh, I'm sure you probably are aware that this is the 125th anniversary of our Statue of Liberty, and you have a marvelous story to tell about the Statue of Liberty and your involvement with it. Well, my fellow Medal of Honor recipients selected me some 35 years ago to be their chaplain. What a tremendous honor it has been to serve those men. There will never be another group like them. That is for sure. And as the chaplain of the Medal of Honor Society, I was invited to come to New York. 1986. 1986. And give the opening prayer to the dedication or the rededication of the restored Statue of Liberty. It must have been a magnificent moment for you. It absolutely was, one I will never forget. Right. And I had never seen the Statue of Liberty. I went out the Pacific That's way. right, you went out the back, the back way of the, <laughs> the United States. Way. So after the opening ceremony downtown, then we went out to the Statue of Liberty where they had all the boats and right. Red, white, and uh, red, white, and blue yes, water. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yes. And the fire boats. Fire boats, and what a day! What a day! What a day! Right on into the night. Absolutely. Fabulous, as I remember, a fireworks display. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And like to say, this is the one twenty-fifth, and the saddest thing is, Woody, is very few people today. Now, this is the one twenty-fifth anniversary of yes. our Statue of Liberty. It just is sad to know that America has forgotten how important that lady is. Uh, you are absolutely right. That's absolutely true. And what a, what a shame. It, I think, goes along with our failing or our downfall of patriotism. Yes, it does. Yes, yes it, it does. Yes. And I think that's why the, the new museum is a needed situation. Absolutely. And we need to make our young people today realize the importance of what they have in this country that no other country in the world has. Exactly. Thank you so much. You're welcome. My pleasure. I'm with Sergeant Major Ken Stunk, United States Army, Medal of Honor recipient. And Ken, what does liberty and freedom mean to you? Well, freedom is it's something that I mean, it's the best thing in the world. I've been traveling around the world in, in my military career, and I've seen places that, you know, they don't, they don't have the freedoms that we have in this country. And to be able to say what we want to say and do what we want to do. And um, so freedom, freedom, it is such an important thing. And only, if only other people in the world could understand what freedom really is and how great America really is. And, you know, that comes from a lot of sweat and blood from people back in the, back in the Revolutionary War all the way up to what's going on, those great men and women that we have in the military right now. And they're, they're helping to protect that freedom that we enjoy so much. And, and so... Um, Freedom to me is, is probably being able to choose what I want to do, choose to where I want to live, choose what I want to say, and and um, so freedom is a big thing. And I'm not sure if I got that answer right. You got it. Correct. <laughs> did I get absolutely? Did I get it close? You certainly did. I mean, freedom is God. I mean, sometimes we take it for granted. Some people do and take it for granted that, you know, what freedom's really like. I said, wow. And yeah, go to some of these other countries, everything that's going on in the world right now. It's like, wow. It's, it, this world is going, it's going a little wacko, I think. Ken, thank you for serving. Okay. okay. Thank you. I'm with Colonel Joe Marm, retired United States Army who was the recipient of the Medal of Honor in Vietnam, Major War, responsible for a movie called We Were Soldiers. Is that correct, sir? That's correct. That is correct. Now, 
Colonel, 125th anniversary of the Statue of Liberty is this year. And tell us, look out there in that camera, and tell us what liberty and freedom means to you. Uh, we are the greatest nation in the world because of the, the people that have come across, the immigrants and the people that have come across through the, the Statue of Liberty and have seen the Statue of Liberty. So that's a, it's, it's what we're all about. And because of the men and women who serve in our armed forces, we are free and uh, the best country in the world because of, of these young men and women who served uh, 125 years ago throughout, our, uh, throughout the, the previous, the past and the future. We have a, a great uh, country because of, of all the, the young men and women who have served. And will continue and to serve. And will continue to serve, yes, sir. Great. Colonel, thank you so much, and thank you for serving. Thank you. With me is Gary G. Wetzel, Army Aviation Vietnam recipient of the Medal of Honor. Gary, tell me, what does freedom and liberty mean to you? Freedom means doing or saying because I can and hopefully not with, without hurting anybody. I can walk where I want to walk to. I can drive to where I want to because I can. But, you know, we, we look at that word freedom and we look at the cost of freedom. And when I say that, I, I mean the people before us that gave, some gave the ultimate sacrifice, him or her, for what that flag stands for, for you and I to be here. I guess that's, that's freedom. Wonderful. Thank you for serving, Gary. Thank you. With me is Colonel Wesley Fox, recipient of the Medal of Honor, United States Marine Corps. And Colonel, I, we have the 125th anniversary of our Statue of Liberty coming up this year. This year. And uh, I would like to ask you to look out that camera and tell the people what does liberty and freedom mean to you? Good option. What does freedom and liberty mean to me? And that basically is that I can do what I want to do when I'm ready to do it. And not only me, but my friends, my family, and everyone that I'm involved with. Now, in our society, in our country, there's a little bit of a negative side to that because they do things I don't necessarily agree with, not the way I was brought up, but that's what freedom's all about. They have that right, and I know I don't stand in their way for it, but I also know that I go off and fight for that freedom so that they can do some of the dumb things that they do do. But that, again, is what freedom's all about. Thank you so much, and thank you for serving, Colonel. It was sure my pleasure, and I'm sorry I can only do 43 years. <laughs> you know, many people don't know this, uh, Rusty, but this is the 125th anniversary of the Statue of Liberty. And uh, I'd just like for you to say, look out to that audience and say, what does liberty and freedom mean to you? Well, at the time, the Vietnam War came along. We had come of age in the time of Stalin in Russia, and I had grown up watching Victory at Sea. And I think what it meant at that time, it, it, from a 22-year-old, you knew what horrors Nazi Germany had had provoked on the world, and you knew that Stalin. We knew enough about what had happened in Russia under communism. And I think it boiled down to we have a wonderful life as through the eyes of a 22-year-old in this country. And communism, which is what we were fighting, and uh, was a total opposite, diametrically opposed to our way of life. And I think when, when you're that age, you kind of see things as good and evil. You're not as nuanced as a college professor might be. 
That's right. So it was easy, kind of easy to say, well, if, if people in Vietnam, and that was our view at that point in time, that's where the focus was, was, if they're being suppressed by an evil like communism, and we've got to stop them somewhere, you have to stand at, at the gate, like the barbarians at the gate, so to speak. They have to be stopped. Uh, my generation, my father's generation was World War II. Our uncles were Korea, and I had heard in history class in, it, in college that every generation has a war. And I thought, well, this is our war. So back to the question, what did it mean to me? I think I appreciated what we had in this country, freedom to be what you wanted to be, to work where you wanted to work, and uh, worship where you wanted to worship. And uh, so obviously I was willing to defend that for some other folks on the other side of the world. And I think that's what it really boiled down to was good and evil. And obviously I felt like we were on the good side and the good side. communism was, which is what our enemy was in Vietnam, was on the on the evil side. So it, it boiled down to something simple. And I think that's uh, an explanation. For, uh, people said, well, why did you do it? You didn't have to volunteer. You didn't. You could have stayed on a ship, slept in warm sheets, clean sheets, and not put yourself through what you did, had to go through uh, to be a Navy SEAL. But uh, I think it was uh, more or less a duty you felt Every generation before us had done their duty, and it was our time to do it. Because I appreciated the, the freedoms and the, that I had had growing up, and I think, as I mentioned a minute ago, we had seen how the rest of the world suffered under in World War II, and had heard about how many people died in under communism. And so that's what it meant. It, it meant it, it meant it's time to. Put up or shut up. Time to time to fight or retreat. Thank you for serving. Sure. Thank you. I was just out of the service, thumbing through the classifieds, when an at that said old Chevy somehow caught my eye. The lady didn't know the year. If it ran, thought I had that thousand dollars in my hand. It was way back in the corner of this old ramshackle barn. For Thirty years of dust and dirt on that green army turf. When I pulled the cover off, it took away my breath. What she called a Chevy was a '66 Corvette, and I fell. What a thrill I got when I sat behind the wheel. I opened up the glove box and that's when I found the note. The year was 1966 and this is what he wrote. He said, my name is Private Andrew Malone. And if you're reading this, then I didn't make it whole. But for every dream that shattered, another one comes true. This car was once a dream of mine, now it belongs to you. And though you may take her and make her your own, you'll always be right here with private belong. Well, it didn't take me long at all. Head are running good, and I love to hear those horses thunder underneath her hood. I had a shining like a diamond, and I put the rag top down. All the pretty girls will stop and stare as I drove her through town. The buttons on the radio didn't seem to work quite right. It picked up that oldie show, especially late at night. I'd get the feeling sometimes if I turn real quick I'd see a soldier riding a shotgun in the seat right next to me. 
Good morning. I'm Wayne Witter, Atlanta Vietnam Veterans Business Association. The flag folding ceremony represents the same religious principles on which our country was originally founded. The portion of the flag denoting honor is the canton of blue containing the stars representing the states our veterans served in uniform. The canton field of blue dresses from left to right and is inverted when draped as a pall on the casket of a veteran who has served our country. In the armed forces of the United States, at the ceremony of retreat, the flag is lowered, folded in a triangle fold, and kept under watch throughout the night as a tribute to our nation's honored dead. The next morning it is brought out, and at the ceremony of Reveille, run aloft as a symbol of our belief in the resurrection of the body. The first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in the eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veteran departing our ranks who gave a portion of life for the defense of our country to obtain a peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature. For as American citizens trusting in God, it is to him we turn in times of peace as well as in times of war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country, for in the words of Stephen Decatur, our country in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but it is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is for where our hearts lie. It is with our heart that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and a flag against all her enemies, whether they be found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death, that we might see the light of day, and to honor mother for whom it flies on Mother's Day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood, for it has been through their faith, love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of the men and women who have made this country great have been molded. The tenth fold is a tribute to father, for he too has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since they were first born. The eleventh fold in the eyes of a Hebrew citizen represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon and glorifies in their eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold in the eyes of a Christian citizen represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies in their eyes God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. When the flag is completely folded, the stars are uppermost reminding of us of our national motto, In God We Trust. 
After the flag is completely folded and tucked in, it takes on the appearance of a cocked hat, ever reminding us of the soldiers who served under General George Washington and the sailors and marines who served under Captain John Paul Jones, who were followed by their comrades and shipmates in the armed forces of the United States, preserving for us the rights, privileges, and freedoms we enjoy today. May God continue to bless the United States of America. Well, it's an honor to be here with Barney. Barney is a recipient of the Medal of Honor, and he was here in Georgia for this fabulous 25th anniversary of honoring our people that have fallen in Vietnam. It's a pleasure to have you, sir. Oh, thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Great to be aboard. Uh, tell me some more about what, and what I'm going to lead into is, is this is the 125th anniversary of our Statue of Liberty celebration. If you would just tell us what liberty and freedom particularly means to you, and just look right out there at that camera. Well, I think uh, liberty and, and freedom uh, is what being an American is all about. It's what uh, our forefathers came to this great country for because uh, of the oppression that they received in, the, in their homelands. So I think uh, liberty and the ability to do what you want, when you want, the way you want to do it, is uh, what America's foundation was built upon. And not only is it the 125th anniversary of the Statue of Liberty, but this year is the 150th anniversary of the Medal of Honor. Please tell and us I more think, about that. And I think this medal stands for really what our country is about because the people who have earned this, uh, they've earned it for individual acts. But I wear this in honor of those great Marines and phenomenal corpsmen that I had the opportunity to lead on the field of battle some 46 years ago. But this is what this is the metal that is uh, what our country is made up of. Thank you, sir. Thank you for serving. Okay, thank you. Well, we're doing a 125th anniversary of the Statue of Liberty, which will be re restored again. And, uh, you know, I bet very few people know where it even came from. France. All right, correct. And there is one there in Paris. Yep. And uh, so, in conclusion, look out there and tell our people what does liberty and freedom mean to Major Whittier? Well, um, we have a saying that a Marine coined at Quezon at the siege. He said, uh, To those who fight for it, life has a flavor the protected never know. And this is true, as uh, Don Pardue said, uh, many people see the elephant. But to face them in combat, and that is history that started in the Civil War. The young man didn't want to upset his parents, so he told his brothers and sisters, if my letter says I've seen the elephant, it means I saw the enemy today. If it says I faced the elephant, I was in a battle. And we don't seem to learn in this country that freedom is not free. Somebody paid the price. I've been very fortunate in my airline flying and in uh, my wife's interest of traveling and seeing the cemetery at Omaha Beach. In fact, I was asked to speak there, uh, to a group of uh, U.S. soldiers that were there. Uh, you go and see all these cemeteries worldwide. Those are the true heroes. They gave it all so that we could continue our lives. And right now, we're having our freedoms taken. Freedom means to me I can choose the church I want to or choose not to go to church. I can choose the wife I want. It's not an arranged marriage. I can discipline my children the way I want. I can send them to what schools I want. I can choose my doctors. I can choose choice. But along with choice comes responsibility. We have to be responsible to ourselves, to our family, but to our country. It's the greatest country on earth, even with all the faults we have today. All you have to do, I've done uh, probably 15 years of uh, missionary work in the Eastern Bloc countries, and I've given my testimony to the Fellowship of Military Officers in Kiev, Ukraine, Moscow, Russia. And it, this is still the best country in the world. But we have big problems, and our freedoms are being slowly eroded away. I'm not going to get political, because to me the only difference between Republican and Democrat is pronunciation. <laughs> so uh, I'm just a realist, and uh, I've been there, done that. And uh, unless the American people wake up, they're going to find real soon 
what it means not to have freedom. And anybody who lost their freedom, I'm not sure if Ronald Reagan said this or some, but anyway, anyone who has lost their freedom never gets it back. So uh, you got to hang on to what we've got and get it back to what it was meant. This country was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. It has been defended by America's finest. That's what I have on my uh, email patterns. It says we are, we are very fortunate to be, be uh, protected by America's best. And I also have the Marine Corps saying, often tested, always faithful, brothers forever. When you find people that have been in the military, there's a camaraderie that you can't get in a fraternity, at a college, or anywhere else. Especially for those that have seen the elephant and they've shed their blood for this country. But as I say, all the uh, medals and decorations will get, and that and two dollars will get you a cup of coffee. Our determination with the ABBA is to make sure that these uh, young troops never get treated the way we did, treated when we came back. And that's why we go out to the USO and welcome them home. But, absolutely. But I absolutely uh, think that it's the greatest country on the earth, and uh, all people have to do. We fought to give you the right to vote. When you say, I, I don't want to vote, or I've wasted my vote by voting for someone, so, no. If you don't vote, you waste your vote. So that's what freedom means to me, is choice, but also with it comes responsibility. Major, it is a <laughs> pleasure to be with you, and thank you for serving. Thank you. My pleasure. With me is Brigadier General Larry Dudney, United States Army, and you are still on active duty, sir, right? Correct. Full-time with the Georgia Army National Guard. Fantastic. As you may know, and I think we discussed, this is the 125th anniversary of our Statue of Liberty this year. And please tell us, look out there at the camera there, and tell us, what does liberty and freedom mean to you, sir? Uh, having the opportunity to... Uh, do two combat deployments and spend some time in some other countries and seeing how other countries, people in other countries live, uh, their conditions, uh, in some cases lack of freedom, lack of democracy, and to live in the greatest country in the world here where we have a lot of freedoms, uh, and you know, freedom of speech, religion, press, and also having that opportunity to exercise those freedoms, it, it just means everything to me. And. Let's talk about what happened to you that was very significant in regards to 911. Uh, yes, uh, very, very, uh, uh, very, very hectic day. Uh, we were. I, I worked in the Pentagon in the Quadrennial Defense Review Office. Uh, we were in, in the office watching some of the activities that were taking place on the television that morning with reference to the World Trade Center. And it just really didn't seem real. It seemed more like a like a movie. It was Hollywood more than anything else. The only only noise that was being made that morning, or, or the only conversation taking place, was by the people that were you know at, at TV stations that were uh, covering the uh, World Trade Center. Uh, a couple of minutes later, I guess, and we ended up just kind of disbanding, going back into our cubicles, our workspaces, making phone calls, sending out emails, and I called a friend of mine, a Marine Colonel, that uh, worked on the Joint Staff at that time, uh, talked with him, and then, I, I don't know, it could have been 20 seconds or two minutes, not real sure, but then that's when the plane hit the building. It hit uh, 150, 200 meters from our office, uh, and from then it was uh, bedlam for a little bit, uh, a lot of screaming you know, going on. I was thrown across the room along with you know, several other people that day. Uh, and ended up getting the secretary out, and then the office next to uh, office next to us going toward the point of impact. Only one one female made it out, a civilian contractor. We were able to get her out as well that morning. Uh, and then two doors down toward the point of impact, uh, we had another small uh, a directorate. Uh, that was down there. No one made it out. Matter of fact, one of them was a very good friend of mine. It was in the office that morning watching t uh, watching the television with us, mm -hmm. and went back down to his office and uh, didn't make it out. But it's it's one of those days that'll stay with you for the rest of your life. You talk to people that know where they were when you know uh, President Kennedy was assassinated, or right. you know 
uh, where you were when you know, we first had ma- men That's walk exactly on the moon. Where I was, right. School. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, this is one of those days that uh, you know will stay with me for the rest of my life. I don't know exactly you know where we were, what we were doing. Everybody in the office. We were very, very fortunate that uh, uh, everybody in our office made it out that morning. And uh, it's just a day I'll never forget. It's hard to believe this is the tenth year reunion, uh, not reunion, but anniversary of this right. particular event. It, it, it's flown by. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, it it, it really has. I, it's one of those things that uh, you, you still see some of it on television, and it just seems like it was only yesterday, right. and it's coming up on ten years. Ten years. Thank you for serving, General. Thank yeah. you for being with us. Oh, thank you for having me. All right. Let's see how they do it this time. Come on. Let's hear it. This land. 